I'm building the world's largest lemonade stand to quench the masses' growing thirst for blood. You just cut this watermelon in half. Do you think that it can cut through a ballistics dummy? So stick around, because you won't want to miss how this all ends. This video is brought to you by Norfolk Southern Railways. As the world around us continues to fall further into chaos, we have to remember to be grateful for the good things that we have. As long as we have shelter over our heads, food to eat, and water to drink, then there's still hope that everything will turn out okay. Welp, the water is contaminated. Look, it's filled with worms. It's a common misconception that collecting rainwater is illegal. In fact, in most states, it's encouraged, though sometimes a permit is required, limiting the amount that can be collected. Lumbriculus variegatoris, also known as black worms, propagate in shallow waters, feeding on microorganisms. They reproduce by breaking themselves apart, each half regenerating into a new individual worm. And in many states, the use of the water is restricted for non-drinking purposes. But why, besides the potential for natural contaminants, would rainwater be unsafe for consumption? When water vapor forms in the atmosphere, it comes into contact with forever chemicals. A term referring to a group of pollutants called PFAS, pretty fucking annoying substances. So now the hard part, how do I get this on top of there? And well, it turns out forever chemicals have been found in the ecosystem and in the blood of nearly all Americans tested and have been associated with health problems like cancer as well as issues with the immune system. So I guess now even the rain is compromised, leaving us to have to rely on bottled water companies and city water systems. Surely they will provide us with clean, safe, drinkable water, right? Get out your tinfoil hats. If you wanted to incinerate hundreds of thousands of Japanese citizens in 1945, you would first need atomic bombs. In order to make atomic bombs, you would need industrial quantities of enriched uranium. To enrich that uranium, you would need millions of pounds of fluoride. Have you ever heard of a thing called fluoridation? The Manhattan Project. The secret U.S. military program which produced the first atomic bomb contracted honest chemical companies like DuPont to start manufacturing fluoride for the war effort. Unfortunately for the farmers downwind of the DuPont facility, the heavy fluoride emissions poisoned their crops, caused their animals and farm workers to grow severely ill, leading them to file lawsuits against DuPont. Lawsuits which, if successful, would result in hundreds of thousands of dollars in damages, create a public relations disaster, as well as open the doors for future lawsuits, all of which would be greatly harmful to the post-war bomb program's increasing need of fluoride to produce more atomic bombs, the weapon that made the United States a dominant power in the world order. This prompted leading Manhattan Project scientists, along with various important government agencies, to create Program F, a classified fluoride research operation conducted at the University of Rochester. This is the dumbest thing that I'm doing. I can clearly see it. Oh, a thousand ways this could go wrong and I could really injure myself. The purpose of Program F was simple. Study the effects of fluoride on humans and provide evidence useful in fighting prior and potential litigation against the bomb program. A clear conflict of interest was present. In one now declassified memo addressed to the head of the Manhattan Project's medical division, Program F's chief pharmacologist asked, would there be any use in making attempts to counteract the local fear of fluoride? through, perhaps, the usefulness of fluoride in tooth health, initiating what would become a 10 to 15 year trial experiment in which the water supplies of four cities were fluoridated. Fast forward to today, where fluoride is added to over 70% of U.S. water systems. They can drink away tomorrow's tooth decay. Oh, I got this 140 pound log up onto the guillotine platform. I feel like an Egyptian. I feel like the people who built Stonehenge. Now let me be clear, the effects of fluoride on teeth had been known since the early 1900s. And just to be transparent, I did run into some dead ends when trying to verify some of this information, mainly the specific court cases between the farmers and DuPont, as well as relevant documents that turned up missing. 
It's growing increasingly difficult to decipher what is or isn't historically true due to the ease at which power and money can distort how history is remembered altogether. That said, from what I could find, there is a significant and growing amount of evidence that suggests a host of negative health effects from fluoride. Empirical evidence from several nation studies, some of which have been published in reputable peer-reviewed scientific journals, have indicated that fluoride is a powerful central nervous toxin and might adversely affect human brain functioning, as well as correlations between low-dose fluoride exposure and diminished IQ in children, not to mention the various bone and joint problems that can occur with long-term exposure of fluoride to the body. This isn't just a war between crazed conspiracy theorists and rational people. Water fluoridation has been a long time highly debated and contentious issue amongst established scientific and civilian communities on either side. In my personal opinion, if fluoride is good for your teeth, well, then it's already in most major toothpaste brands. Why would I bathe in it and drink it in my water and water my plants with it, etc., etc.? I think about the potential for nefarious players involved. The various chemical companies who in the past would have to pay fines to dispose of their chemical waste now profit by selling it directly to the cities. And where profit can be made, corruption can often be found. Remember, lead was highly accepted in gasoline and a ton of other products for decades before it was finally determined to be a major contributor to health-related ailments. Drink up. This is the bust of a ballistics dummy. The website I bought it from claims that it's 95% accurate as human analogs in flesh and bone, which makes it a perfect test subject to ensure that my lemon chopper has the necessary power to successfully serve its purpose. It's a kind of a hideous looking thing, isn't it? But even decrepit ghoulish dummies deserve a name. So I think I'll name this one Jeff. Let's hope that the blade weighs enough to do its job. This is the most crucial stage for making sure I get all the measurements correct. If I'm off just the slightest cutting these support posts, then the uprights might be at a tilt, too far apart or misaligned. So, I hope I got my math right. I chose to talk about water fluoridation because the issue has been a prominent conspiracy theory for a long time. One that, when brought up, instantly causes some people to roll their eyes. To many, even questioning long-established practices seems regressive. We'd like to assume our current society functions because of a well-thought-out system put into place in the past by honest, capable people for honest, practical purposes. That things have always been the way they are, and who really has the time or mental bandwidth to question it? In order to progress forward, we must stand on the shoulders of the giants that came before us and trust that those giants were competent, had foresight, and were impervious to corruption. That the systems in place which dictate our day-to-day -day lives were installed for the beneficial longevity of humanity and not for the immediate prosperity of those who instituted them. The world we live in is the only one we know, and we're expected to accept what we're told about how it operates but we don't really know how the world functions. All we know is what the operators allow us to see. Why do you think there's such a strong push to ridicule and minimize terms like conspiracy theory? A belief that some secret but influential organization is responsible for an event or phenomenon. Sure, there's always the potential that false conspiracy theories could influence enough masses to think irrationally and take potentially damaging actions against themselves and others. It's happened before. But at its core, who is most at risk from the rejection of the standard explanation for events and the investigation into whether it can be attributed to covert groups or organizations? Who benefits the most from the demonization of the simple act of individuals questioning the reality of the world around them? Questioning the motives of power structures, questioning the narrative fed to us which curates our opinions and directs our beliefs. The more we question, the more we expose the hidden underlying deceit. This line of thinking might be cliche. Everyone's heard it before. Shady, faceless, powerful people doing bad things behind closed doors for their personal advancement. 
poison in the water, medicating the people against their knowledge or will, insider trading, mind control, tapped phones, buying up all the housing to force us to rent forever, buying up all the farmland to control our food, owning nothing, eating bugs, seed oils, microplastics, social credit scores, living in a pod, inside jobs, chemical spills, political money laundering through proxy wars, child prostitution rings involving the most powerful and influential people in the world. Just because it's cliche doesn't inherently make it false. The easiest way to get someone to dismiss an idea is to desensitize them to it, to diminish the value of the idea and lessen its importance low enough that to even consider it would be a waste of time. A lie told enough times will become accepted as truth. And if that truth is repeated enough, it becomes an indisputable article of belief. What? You really think that happened? Didn't the fact checkers already debunk that? And yet everything we take for granted as stable societal foundations is to some degree a lie. A house of cards built over the years, one by one on the flawed knowledge of the times, able to remain standing just long enough that people stop questioning its validity and sustainability. As long as it seems fine for the time being, we all move on, allowing more and more erroneous cards to stack up, creating a weakened infrastructure that only appears solid if you don't look too closely at any one card. Like a Ponzi scheme that requires us to continue believing that it's working, or else the illusion fails and it all falls apart. Everywhere you look, everything. The ingredients in the food you eat, the manufacturing of your clothes, if not the harvesting of the materials needed to manufacture your clothes, our phones and electric vehicles, the batteries of which are created through child slave labor, recycling, health insurance, our currency, fractional reserve banking, pesticides, data control, planned obsolescence. How are you feeling? Bad? Here, take some SSRIs. How's your attention span? Dwindling? Here, take some amphetamine. Don't trust your government? Don't worry. You only have two choices and we own them both. Hey, don't worry about the millions of children who go missing each year. Don't worry about who visited Epstein's Island. Don't worry about Hollywood. Netflix just released season 24 of your favorite show. Spend hours on TikTok. Stay inside. Stay weak. Stay distracted. Everything is working just fine and there's nothing to worry about. So definitely, definitely don't start theorizing about anything. It's all so overwhelming. How could you blame anyone for just wanting to unplug and say fuck it? I don't need to concern myself with all of it. I got more immediate problems to solve. But the more conspiracies you look into, the more things begin to make sense. As long as you can avoid the red herrings put out to confuse and misdirect you. We've only got two eyes and can't look in all directions all the time. And that's how these corrupted systems get implemented. In the darkness, behind the scenes, oftentimes by psychopaths, completely disconnected from the sensibilities of the people whose lives they dictate. The decisions are made by those who have no concern for the consequences. It was never meant to last, only long enough to get the payout, and inevitably, it all starts to collapse piece by piece. We can prolong the decline, but we first have to become aware of the true reality of our circumstance. As long as we're provided with cheap comforts and convenient distractions, then nobody will be compelled to take any sort of action. But all that will change when the final catalyst arrives, when it becomes too expensive to live, the food becomes scarce, people start to go hungry, and when the water finally dries up, whatever is coming next is guaranteed to be no good. The water that we are using, mostly in a very irresponsible manner, is not the human right, and it needs to get the value when the former CEO of Nestle, one of the world's largest bottled water producers, argued that water should not be a human right, but should instead be commodified and sold by private industry, it created a terrifying vision of reality. Nestle is arguably one of the world's most evil corporations. It's worth looking into. And if you didn't know, Nestle, under the rename Blue Triton, is the parent company of many major United States bottled water brands. Through political lobbying, deceitful water rights claims, and poorly regulated pumping on expired permits, Nestle has our water by the balls, draining the aquifers, pumping tens of millions of gallons a year from national forests, rivers, and wells, drying up the streams, and exacerbating the devastating effects in areas suffering from severe drought, all while paying just a few hundred dollars annually in permit fees and profiting in the billions. The availability of our water 
our precious bodily fluids is controlled and exploited by select few corporate entities. They drain the water from underneath your feet and sell it right back to you. So when I see that water stacking up in front of gas stations, getting beat down on by the sun, I mean, whose water is that? Don't let them lie to you. No one actually watches the cameras. And the poor people at Nestle are just gonna have to write this one off as a loss. Somehow, we've become completely reliant on corporations and government agencies to provide all our human needs. It's poisoned our ability to live. We're constantly flooded with news about our inevitable demise by intentional design. War, famine, pandemic, financial collapse, instilling us with a permanent sense of helplessness, which is then molded into panic and fear, creating the perception that our lives depend on our willingness to embrace the rulers as our protectors from the certain doom ahead. They use our panic to push for more control new nuclear threat, a weapon the country says could hit any place in the world. Report on UFO sightings today saying an additional 300 from the East Palestine train derailment come to light. One of the concerns of local residents has been water contamination after dead fish were found. The food chief estimates that the war in Ukraine has pushed 70 million people around the world closer to starvation. As long as we are kept content with the bone that they throw us. As long as we enjoy the comfort of our leashes, then they will forever remain our masters. Bread and circus, the enemy is right outside the gates. It's an algorithm that has worked time and time again for millennia. As long as we're kept in a constant state of panic, then we will continue to go along with anything claiming to offer safety. Brought to you by Pfizer. Panic. What? is the evolutionary purpose of panic. To increase our adrenaline, heighten our senses. We're not so different, you and I. Deliver a pulse of urgency to our body, activating our fight or flight survival mode, driving us to act erratically in the face of opposing erraticism. Time is running out. The fear of constant threats lurking around every corner served our ancestors well, when indeed the risk of death came from all directions. I wonder if that still holds true today, or if those instincts have become not obsolete, but misdirected, where the perceived threats are less detrimental, but still as prevalent in our minds, and our efforts to fight them are not misdirected, but futile. How many dangers can we possibly concern ourselves with before we reach a breaking point? Before the other instincts kick in? The ones that tell us to just give up, to fall asleep in the snow, to roll over and surrender our underbellies to the jagged teeth of the beast of which we've fallen prey? Or the instincts to panic the herd and stampede, destroying everything in its path, the bad as well as the good? If some kind of revolution ever did occur here, I fear I'll be among those in the trial line waiting to face retribution. It's always been that way. Those who preach the invitation of destruction into the world see its arrival before all else. What you bring into light shines brightest in your own eyes. Something is coming. I don't know what, but something is coming, and coming fast. The smell of blood is in the water and everyone wants a taste, but for whose blood lacks any consensus? The rich. The politicians, the landlords, the left, the right, those who abuse children, perhaps all of them, perhaps ourselves. What purpose my lemonade stand has to do with any of it is beyond my understanding. The shocking number, hundreds of requests from people asking to be the first to test my lemon chopper on, and hundreds more anticipating that I myself will be first. Half tongue in cheek, but still indicative of the present zeitgeist of our collective surrender. We lose. They, whoever they are, wins. And now we opt out of our own existence. The hundreds of warnings that this project will have me put on a watch list of certain three-letter agencies. As though we haven't all been on that watch list for decades. Everything we say recorded. Everything we type is logged. 
Every thought and opinion we release into the digital world is fed into a machine to calculate our value to, or our potential threat to, the existence of that very machine. That worked out perfectly. Well, Jeffrey, do you have any last words? If this is true, and we are all on the watch list. Say goodbye to Jeffrey. Well, then I ask, are you watching? Jeff, I'm sorry I had to go this way. Rest in peace. Let me guess. You thought that it was over. Yeah, you did. You thought that this was the last video in the series, didn't you? Come here. Look at that. Does that look done to you? Look at it. It's all bland. No color, no decorations. Not even a countertop to sell lemonade on. So you think I really spent God knows how much on all that lumber, spent all that time putting that together just to what? Oh, I cut a watermelon in half. Oh, I cut a ballistics dummy. All done. Nah, don't kid yourself. It ain't done yet. I think I got about two videos left. The big finale has yet to come. And I know what you're saying. Oh, but Rusty, you've been working on this forever. No one's talking about guillotines anymore. All right, listen, if you really support this project, if you're still interested, here's what I suggest. Go subscribe to my second channel, Rusty Uncaged, because that's where I'm going to be uploading the next video, where I answer all the topics and questions related to this project, which didn't fit in the main series. I'm going to start uploading more over there because I still highly suspect that there's some sort of internal shadow ban on my main channel. I really don't know, but it's quite possible that I might eventually have to move all my future uploads over there. It doesn't hurt to try. Also, if you want to show support for this channel or for my lemonade stand, consider buying one of these return to tradition patches. And if patches aren't your thing, consider contributing to my Patreon. Honestly, any support at all is much appreciated. This project has probably had the worst return on investment of anything that I've ever done. So that said, I appreciate all of you following me on this journey so far. I look forward to seeing you all over on Rusty Uncaged for the next video, as well as back here for the big finale. So stay tuned. And remember, don't let corporations and politicians manipulate your feelings and sensibilities. They don't care about you. So don't believe their lies. Thanks for watching.